Okay, Adult Sunday School. Uh, we're going to go through the names of God. And um, when you know God's names, you know his full character better. You know his full character better. So as we study his names, then you're going to know different parts of him. Um, uh, you think of a diamond, you can see it. Uh, I don't have a diamond ring. Got rid of it. Didn't want the bling. But if you did, if you just looked at one direction, you'd only see one way. But if you came in another direction, you'd see another way. And if you came in another direction, you'd see another way. And that's how it is when we study all of God's names. And he has many names. Can any of you guys give me some of God's names? Say The Lord of Hosts. The Lord of Hosts, yeah. Holy One of Israel. Holy, yeah, amen. Any other? Yes? El Shaddai. El Shaddai, good. What's El Shaddai mean? Shaddai, get some sleep. El Shaddai, I can't remember. Any others? I am. I am? Yeah, we're going to cover I am today. Yes? Sid Canoe. Sid Canoe, what's that mean? I'm not sure. Is it righteousness? Yes, or? the Lord our righteousness. Yes. Good. You got lots of them. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Uh, and we're going to go through them. And I don't know if we're going to do this for five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. Uh, uh, this is my little cheat sheet poster. I'm not really <laughs> preaching off of this here. But today is um, Yahweh, which is his foundational name. And in English, it's Jehovah. In Hebrew, there's no J's. So that's why it's Yeshua, but we say Jesus. We, and there's no J's in Hebrew, okay? And the, his, his name is sacred, and the superstitious Jews were always afraid of accidentally blaspheming by saying his name, because they're silly. And so they would always substitute the name Adonai. So today we're covering the one name, Yahweh and Adonai, which is the same exact name. It's just the name that they would say to each other. That's even what you'll hear in the movies. They'll say, I don't know. And so the Lord is great. The Lord is master. The Lord is majestic. He has total authority. Um, of course, in here, the I am, the one who's self-existent. God, he never changes. Promises never fail. And um, I'll give you a few of these scripture references that you can write down. I mean, my notes, we're not going over these scripture references. So if you want to know just a few more on Adonai, uh, you can read for yourself. You know, obviously, you can see this after dinner. Psalms 8. Um, Isaiah 40, 3, 4, 5, and Ezekiel 16, 18. And so it, it shows who God is um, to the world. These names show who God is to the world and to us. And we get to street preach these names, and at times we kind of we kind of do. We're like, God will kill you. He's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies. God will kill Joe Biden. Why? Because he's the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of the armies. Why do I have a big banner? You fake, wimpy, Ray Comfort, passing out track loser that doesn't want banners because they're too... Because the Lord's name is Banner. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Literally, one of his names is Banner, and you're going to come against banners. That's how I wrote my evangelism book because my old fake pastor in Tucson was like, oh, you can't have the banners. And I'm like, one of his names is Jehovah Nisi. That's literally God's name, Banner. And Jeremiah's like, I protest against you. And I was like, here. And so I wrote up this like three-page thing about the Lord's our banner. And I gave it to him. Probably never read it, but hey, it started a book off. Started a book. So I'm like, okay, well, let's break down some more things for these losers that are unteachable. Well, it's because their ears are stopped up. So um, Yahweh is 7,000 times in the Bible. 7,000 times. But King James switched it to the word God, Lord, and Lord. All caps, Lord. Lord with just the capital L and the word God. But all these times you've seen Lord and God, like 99% of the times it's Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Now you'll see a few times that we'll go through during the law of first mention of the first, very important, the first time one of his other names is named, okay, uh, is, is, is very significant of when he is. Like um, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord's my peace. The first time is, is in Gideon and uh, Judges. I think it's Judges 6. We'll do that another day. And he's like, you're about to go to war. Don't worry. The Lord's your peace. He's with you in the battle, you know? And then, of course, um, the Lord, my provider, uh, is when um, Abraham's about to slay his son. And God's like, don't do it. I am the Lord, your provider. I'll provide myself a lamb. That's the first time that's ever mentioned. So the law first mentions uh, really, really big. But let's first go to Jeremiah 23. And uh, I'll have uh, Levi read first. And we'll work our way through a 
kind of a social square for everybody to read. Just be ready. I'll call on you when you least expect it. Um, and so we're going to kind of look at the importance of uh, people forgetting God's name. Um, because we can't have people, you know, forget God's name uh, or say it wrong. I, I personally don't like being called Aden, but then I, my name is not Aden, it's Aden, but you call me pastor, okay, who kids, <laughs> okay, A-D-E-N, I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, my wife, would, Maria, probably doesn't like that, you can shake your head, you can, it's adult Sunday school, you're allowed to tell you know, is it GC? Is it Luvu? What? Everybody had this except for James. Like nobody mispronounced James in name. Like it's too, like, too easy. But like Kezion, it's like all the time. You know, it's like uh, yeah, I'm not like uh, Ari. I couldn't even. I was too hard for me. The long name was like Greek. Oh yeah, it's Greek. <laughs> so I had to do the short one. You know, so God's even like a million times more like. He's, you know, he's not going to throw him into hell. We're not one of those weird sacred name cults. If you don't say his name correctly, you're going to hell. Like, those guys don't even street preach a bunch of Judaizer losers. But it is important. It's like you, 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 can, you can enunciate the word a few times if you don't know how to say Yahweh, if you don't know how to say Jehovah Nisi, Yahweh Nisi. Okay, you, you know, the, he knows his name. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, have you read. Jeremiah 23, 26, 27. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name, Rabal. Yeah, Rabal or Baal. I always say Baal, but you can say Baal. Um, to forget my name. He's like, if they can forget the devil's saying, if I can get them to forget his name, then they can forget his character. What he's done, what he's promised, the judgments, it's like part of the package there. It's like forgetting that person's name, you're saying that person's not really that important to me. You know? And uh, they did it by their dreams and by their, by their lies. Um, um, JC 28, 29. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Amen. That's where my prayer comes from. Your, your word is a fire. Your word is a hammer. There it is. But he's like, who, who, what is, what's the chaff of the wheat? Let him talk. Under theonomy, sure, every little house churches. You can never be a judge, a cop, civil authority, or in the real church until you repent of your giving unworthy communion because you don't want to go start your own country and battle for it. You just want to be a leech. But you're not shutting down all the little home gatherings. That's what Catholics did. They killed them all as heretics. Now, certain ones that actually are heretics, well, that's different. Yeah, they need the heretics to need to be put to death, certain ones, for sure. But let them talk. Why? Because I have the truth. Because we, we, the church, have the truth. We can battle every one of their stupid doctrines and see how they'll twist a not salvation penny thing and try to say it is salvation penny and this and that. Let them speak. It's like, yeah, sure, let them speak. No big deal. It's nothing. It's nothing compared to the fire order. They don't preach. They don't have the spirit of God. They don't battle. They don't street preach. And they definitely won't go take their own country. You know, and it's not always execution. People can be just kicked out of the country, too. You know, and so... Uh, but they're forgetting God's name. That, that, those last two verses are just bones because I was like, that's really good. <laughs> so I just wanted to read it. Didn't really have much to do with our lesson. Okay, my wife will read next. Go to Psalms 44, 5. Okay, and do six, seven, eight. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me, but thou hast saved us from our enemies, and hast put them to shame that hated us. And God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever. Okay, we're kind of warming up to where I want to go.
But he's like, I didn't trust my bow, I didn't trust my R15. Now, I didn't, I didn't sell my bow. I didn't get rid of it. I still used it. It's like, I just didn't trust in it. I trusted in God. You know, that's, and that's why street preaching is so important. It's like, yeah, we do all the practical things. We get it. But, but, but ultimately, we're trusting in God. All right, Alina, verse um, 9 and 10. But thou hast cut off and put us to shame, and go not forth with our enemies. With our armies. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy, and they which hate us spoil for themselves. That's the sovereignty of God. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy. They're fighting, and he just puts fear into these backslidden Jews, and they turn and start getting killed, destroyed more. So God is sovereign over all things except for individual salvation. But he could reprobate somebody. Okay? So he's sovereign. So he made, it's in your Bible. Thou makest us to turn back. Yeah, because a bunch of the Jews were bad. So he's like, you, yeah, God made them turn back. So they were, they were killed. Ari, right, verse 11. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat, and hast scattered us among the heathen. Yeah, scattered us among the heathen. Now there's a reason for this, and it has to do with forgetting the name of God. Because I, 20, uh, 21, 22. If we have forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the, heart, the secrets of the heart. 22. Yea, for thy sake, are we killed all the day long? We are counted as as sheep for the slaughter. So two powerful revelations here. I hope you caught the caught it. If we have forgotten the name of our God, that's why you're a coward. That's why you're a coward in street preaching. That's why you're a coward to not confront sin in the camp, sin in your family members, stuff that's going on. That's why. Forgot the name of his. You forgot the name of God. He forgot his character. He forgot these things. And this destroys pietism and pacifism that people say oh we're like sheep made for the slaughter isn't that in your old testament and your new testament well, context what's the context here james the context here is they were disobedient and that's what happened to them. <laughs> yeah that's right pacifist you are a sheep for the slaughter because you're disobedient and didn't get two swords like god said to happen and defend your wife and kids. You're total sheep for the slaughter. Idiot. Uh, Mardi Gras got his ankle broken to show how spiritual and radical he is. And just lets homos pick him up and slam him and break him. And all the buddies stand around and say, it doesn't matter what you do to us. We love you forever. <laughs> Idiot. The crackhead rabbit bunny woman saying you can rape me for Jesus. I mean, it just goes on and on. <laughs> like, the husband was there. Oh, the husband was there too. One of the things he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, for the Lord. What? You're like an adulterer. You're like a cuck adulterer. I don't even know what you call those people. That's the context of spirit. Does that help you? Mm -hmm. You always knew, like, something didn't sound right with sheep <coughs> for the slaughter. And Paul quotes in the Romans, uh, how about because you're a bunch of dumb rebels? Rome came and destroyed you in 70 AD as sheep for the slaughter because you guys killed your Messiah. Yeah, you Jews were sheep for the slaughter. Absolutely. I, just, I mean, I always knew that was wrong, so this blessed me personally. So I'm like, I hate pacifism and false pietism, and I'm like, oh, well, there's the answer to that. And then it's, it's like I was going to stop at verse 20, because that's what our lesson's about. You forgot the name of our God, but it's just like you keep reading, you're like getting other answers, you know, apologetics against false doctrines. I'm like, cool, thank you, Lord. All right, moving on. So when we know God's name, uh, we know God better. The third commandment is, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So we don't want to misrepresent, you know, his, his name, his uh, traits in different ways. Um, and and uh, the law first mentioned is uh, when it's shared the first time, it's always at the perfect timing. And um, it, it, it surrounds the events going on, the names going on, the people going on, what's going on. That God then brings to humanity another part of the diamond of his character. He's like, okay, you know I'm your peace, and you know I've provided... And then later in Jeremiah, under a thousand year reign, he's like, I'm your righteousness. I'm going to kill the bad guys. Mm -hmm. That's the context of Jehovah Sidkenu, our righteousness. It's not so much the blood of Jesus, our righteousness. So we understand that. But the context is he's going to smash the enemies at that time and show he's righteous. You know, the Lord loveth righteousness and judgment. And um, 
So there are many name examples, and uh, this kind of ties into my sermon. You know, Abraham, he was Abram, and then he became Abraham. Okay, Sarai, then became Sarah. Is any any other y'all can give me name changes? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Matthew to Levi. Matthew to Levi. Hey. <laughs> Simon to Peter. Simon to Peter. Yeah. Any others? Saul to Paul. Saul to Paul. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So God's not necessarily changing His name. He's redeeming their names. But God's just adding and showing more. It'd be like a marriage, and you're like, well, I already know I love that person. But after like a year and two years and three years, you're like, oh, I learned some new things. I love them more. Same person. Same God. He, he changed not. I'm the Lord thy God. I changed not. Like, oh, I didn't know. You're my big brother, too. I know you're my master, my Lord, my father. But you're like my big brother. My big brother was like a total loser. Like, so like lazy, like wouldn't defend, just a taker, you know, or like stuff. I mean, I wasn't a good little brother. Don't get me wrong. I was a bad little brother, but like not, not the good example you look up to. Like he like, it's like I had to share my friends with him. He had no friends. And I feel bad for him. So that guy, pray he gets saved. Pray Uncle will get saved. Moving on. So Yahweh is also Jehovah. Yah is the name God. Yah is God. Way? Anybody know what that means? Saves. So his name together is God saves. Yahweh. God saves. Yeshua. Jesus saves. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally his name. And uh, I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Um, so, he's, so we're kind of doing them as two, but really it's one, Jehovah, Yahweh, and Adonai. So Jehovah means the living God, the active God. He's active to be, to be known, to reveal himself unceasingly. He reveals himself in the hearts of people. The law of God's written in their heart, in their conscience, in nature, in the laws of gravity that are unbreakable. The laws of mathematics, which are unmanipulatable, except for common core. <laughs> yeah, certain things, the laws of, of uh, the life is in the blood. I mean, he reveals himself unceasingly. He's the act of God. He's the living God. He's the self-existent one. And he's the one that never, never changes. Now, um, Adonai is all of those. And um, um, also royal title like a king. Like a king times a million. The king of kings, all authority, royal title. Other ones is like king of the, uh, of the generals, of the army, Lord of hosts, uh, you know, of uh, banner representing shalom, peace in your heart. But this title, Adonai, is king. It's royal. He's in charge. He's to be obeyed. And uh, so if you think of uh, like Donald Trump when he was in power, it's like, okay, he could just cause war. He didn't have to get Congress. Congress hasn't declared a war since World War II. These presidents are all, like, wicked. They all use super authority. Vietnam, Korea War, Iraq War, none of those were voted in by our representatives. Every single one of those wars was just signed by an executive order. The war on terrorists, every president, is they're the commander-in-chief. They're the Lord of Host of the American Army. So they have all this power, but that's nothing compared to Adam. God's all power. He can cause them to turn on each other. He can turn on the heart of that president. He can kill that president and put the vice president. He can speak his laughs at their plans. It's like, ah, funny. You think you're going to do that? He's like, I'm going to checkmate you this way. I'm going to do this too. And so he's, he, it's, he's all powerful. So he says, I will handle your enemies. I will handle your debtors. I will handle your promotion in my timing. And when God actually says something for sure, then you can bank on it as 100%. Not like Trump or King George or King Nebuchadnezzar, and they're like saying they're going to do this and that. Well, it still has a five minute timeline from the messenger to go there and do anything could happen. Guy could fall dead, you could get invaded. This, no, no, when God says it, there's nothing that can stop it. His word will not return void. He's the king of kings. He's Adonai. He is Yahweh. No judge can get in his way, no lawyer can get in his way. His word is his law. Uh, so, Law first mentioned here. Um, let's go to um, Genesis 15. Who read, did I have Keziah read last? 
Who read it? Yeah, okay, James, you're up. 15 verse 1 for now. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. There it is, the I am. The I am. It's the same I am he's going to give to Moses. He says, I am Adonai, I am Yahweh, I am thy shield, I am thy royal shield. You know, the royal shields had the emblems of their king on there so they knew who they're messing with or fighting with. And same with their banners that would represent who, um, who, who they were, have their, their symbol on there. And um, so the royal shield, the royal one, is one who expects obedience. You know? Like, like we don't have the revelation of kingship in America because we're in a democracy, but for like, how many years? 300, 5,700 years? That's pretty much how it went. You could call him the tribal chieftain, but he's really the king of the little tribe, okay? You could call him the, the, the this or that, but he's kingship, ran for that long, and they're like, kill him. They just kill him, just chopped his head off right there, you know? Or took him outside the court and chopped it off out there. Or it's, oh, promote him. They, and they, so they had, like, you know, a lot, of, a lot of power. So they would expect this obedience. Well, that's how it is with God. And he's like, fear not, I am thy shield and thy great reward. And that's the same for us, church is our shield, and he himself is his great reward. It's like, well, what am I going to get, God? Like, I'm your reward. You got me. You got me, you got everything. Seek his face, not just his hand. Uh, all right, James, uh, go from two to six. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, that This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Amen. So he used to prop stars. We, have, as Christians, are children of Abraham. You are a star. <laughs> so we can say that. We're stars. You guys are muck. You guys are grime. You guys are like gutter filth. But we're like stars. Not the moon. Not the sun. We're just like stars. Maybe Orion or something. The Bible says, and he believed the Lord, and it was counted for him for righteousness. And this is a dynamic uh, uh, tension, and um, and uh, we need to kind of break this down because real belief has real faith, and real faith acts. Real faith has a corresponding action; otherwise, it's not faith. It's like, oh, I would have loved to have cooked you dinner tonight, honey, but I didn't. Well, then you didn't really love to do that. Well, I would, have, I would have loved to have bought you a new book or jacket, son, but I couldn't. I didn't. Well, then, you know, it's like, oh, our words are bonds. I was like, tell my kids, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I say, like, maybe a lot. No problem with that. But am I yes will be yes, am I no will be no. You know, and so he says here, and this is where a lot of these Baptist Calvinists get it wrong, and say, like, believe God, that's it. It's kind of righteous for him. All right, well, let's look at the tension. Go to James 2.19. James, you want your wife to read, or or not? She got the, it's a baby right there. Oh, the baby's on there. Mm. Got the speaker? No, she's right there. Oh, I can't see. <laughs> All right. You want her to read yet? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. No, Electra. I was mean. Do you want Electra to read? That's yes. A joke. Okay. All right. So James, um, two, nineteen, to uh, twenty-one. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Amen. Underline the word when. So it says he was justified by works when he had done this. But Genesis 15 says he was justified when he believed. So which one is it? Both, <laughs> starting with belief, and then following through. 
Jesus' blood is the door. You go through that free gift of grace through faith, receive salvation, and then you walk the straight and narrow. You walk the highway of holiness. So you can attempt to walk the highway of holiness first, but without being born again, covered by the blood, your old sins are not forgiven. You're still guilty. And, you're, and, and so this is a great dynamic tension. And this is why we're not... Uh, you know, Reformed Protestants necessarily, we are Protestants, and this is why we're not Catholics, because the both sides have it wrong. And one leads to a license of sin, hyper-grace, just believe and that's it, and the other one leads to uh, works-based um, salvation, which Catholicism is one of them. Oh, we'll keep reading. Boys, you ready? Oh, no, yes. Caden, okay, we're going to answer that. We stopped at um, 21, so read 22, 23. Nice and loud. Yeah, James, yeah, 22, 23 loud. Oh, James chapter 2. Oh, you're, you're not there yet? All right, whoever gets there first gets to read it. Race time. James is, James is, you guys are back in like Genesis. Oh, yeah, I see what you're doing. Good. Use the, use the little cheat tabs. Good, good, good. I love the cheat tabs. I wish my Bible had cheat tabs. So, percent back and then you'll be able to do it like just take a huge chunk of your bible and just flip it and then from there start looking for things it's a little sunday school we're not in a hurry it's no big deal so just a little bit before revelation James 2? All right, good. Read verse um, 22. sanctified says the word justified so it's very important and uh, the starting point though is faith you know that's how you receive you're saved by grace through faith that's the starting point it'd be like your kids your kids are growing up and then you were given the gift of life for free God literally created you and gave you the gift of life from God through your parents and then you're like seven, eight, nine, ten, and you're still in diapers. Like, what is going on here? Like, he's not acting like a human. Because the diapers is the baby stage, which is very similar to like an animal. <laughs> I'm not saying kids, babies are animals, but I mean, like, don't dogs just roll around in their own poop and eat their own throat? I mean, like, they could just be in there, like, okay, they are like stuck. So there's these stages that have to have to move on, that have to progress, and um, that's not a very good analogy. But you got to walk out the faith. You got to walk out. True faith has some corresponding works, and not saved by the works. And so, <clears throat> his name is Adonai. He is our King. 
Real Faith has some actions, and um, we're going to go through more of these uh, as we go on. So I wasn't sure how long this lesson was going to be. Any questions or comments just about, in general, the names of God, Yahweh? We're going to go through, like I said, um, 10 or 14 of the names of God. In a lot of weeks, we'll cover two. Yes? So on the, the part where uh, you know how Yah and the way like God says, how do you spell says like the the, well, they bre the, the abbreviation is Y-H-W-H, and the old school is Y-H-V-H, Yahweh, Y-H-V-H. I've always spelled Y H W H, but uh, I don't. I just look up Strong's Concordance words in Hebrew. I don't fully speak it, as you know, as my wife knows. But that, that yeah, Yah for sure, God. And then way, yeah, saves. I guess you can look up the word saves in the Blue uh, Blue Letter Bible. You could uh, the app look up the word saves and then find it in there, and you'd probably see it say that. Yeah. Saves. I am the great I am. Oh, that's right. We're going to read one more scripture. Very important. Uh, John eight fifty eight. Now, oh, the law first mentioned is the burning bush. Moses at the burning bush. Who do I say I am? Who do you? Who do I? What do I say to Pharaoh? Who sent me? And God says, I am. I am that I am. I say I will save my people, the slaves, out of his hand. Is what he's saying. I say, I am. I am self-existent. I am the I am. So that's the law first mentioned for, for um, I am. Of course, the word God is in Genesis chapter 1. All right, Levi. John 8, 58, Jesus battling Pharisees. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. And 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Amen. And that's twice. Because this, this time, um, he's in the temple, and the other time, he's in his hometown in Nazareth, preaching, and they take him to the cliff to throw him off the edge of the cliff and kill him. So, like, he's very straightforward. Like, I don't know how these idiots can possibly twist this, these fake teachers today and these other ones. He says, I am. The Even the Jews knew it. The Jews weren't saying They knew what you were saying. But Jehovah Witnesses throw this out, Mormons throw this out. They all lower Jesus down. All right, any other questions, comments? Yes. Oh, no, that, um, it makes sense what you were saying now about, uh, or how you put it in context of whatever is going on during that time is when God reveals himself and then that scripture is great if we have forgotten thy name because I never put it now that you put it together like that then it's like oh <laughs> that makes sense like that it makes it even deeper because like as you just said the many times you see God and and even in Jeremiah he's using the Lord of hosts a lot and that's because yeah. he's about to smash you know, yeah. Jerusalem, so now he calls Nebuchadnezzar his servant. Yeah. I'm about to use him as my yeah. little peon general VP to go in there and just kill you. I'm the Lord of hosts. Yeah. And he says Lord of hosts a lot in Jeremiah. Yeah. yeah. So now it starts to, you know, yeah. that, that makes sense. Or or at that one scripture where it says, what is his name and what is his son's name? Yeah. And, in Psalms. Yeah, in Psalms. Yeah. And, and so that, yeah, that's. He gathers the wind in his fist. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and so, yeah, he, he introduces it at, at, the, at the perfect time, and he's God, so he's perfect. Everything he does is perfect, and so them getting smashed was like phase two. Phase one of forgetting his name is um, he blinds you and stops your ears up. That's phase one of forgetting God's name. Yes, James? And, and then one, one more, I have a question about, I know, I think it's in Revelation where it talks about there's a name that mm -hmm. we don't know. Yeah, but the two verses after that, it literally like two verses says, but and his name is the Word of God. Okay, so that's um, and then in Gen John one one it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, we beheld His glory. So everybody read Revelation. Oh yeah, that's Jesus. Yeah, but so but the other people don't know his name. 
Right. They don't know his name, so they have to make up a fake name and slander his name and make up a fake Jesus because they don't they don't know his name. You know. I mean, they might in their head be able to say Yahweh, Jehovah. I get that. They can say these different things, but they don't know the killer God, the real God, the Redeemer God, the God that gives power over sin, the theocratic God that rules all areas. They don't get that. They don't get him. They don't know his name because <laughs> they don't really know God. I mean, if you know something intellectually and it's not in your heart, do you really know it? If you don't walk it out, you don't know it. That's very, if you don't walk it out, you don't know it. And we're fine with the babies and give them baby steps and watch them learn to walk and toddle. And it'll be fun watching little electors start to walk and toddle and all that. You don't expect a lot out of them. But after two or three years, you better be walking. Better be connecting things. Better start jogging. Oh, yeah. They don't know God's name. But, yeah, that one in Revelation will throw you off if you stop right there. <laughs> no one knows his name. <laughs> but literally, like the next verse or two. We can go to it real fast. See what, we want. what time is it anyway? Who's the clock? I don't care what time it is. We got all day. Um, somewhere after, I want to say, 18, 19, 20. Piece of candy for whoever finds it first. No, I'm kidding. No, no Sunday school. Look at it. There it is. 19. Um, uh, Levi 19, 12, and 13. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Amen. And verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. So Jesus is the Word. John 1.1. 1, 1. King of kings, the Lord of lords. And, uh, I, you know, I think we can study God's name for like 40 years. <laughs> Live holy, preach, raise good fruit, fruit that remains. And when you get to heaven, we're all going to be on our face. Be like, whoa, I thought I totally knew your name. He's like, nah, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. You know, you're, you're, like, you're like a little four, three or four-year-old. You're a little kid. Well, Adam doesn't know the same stuff as Kate. Then know your characters. Mm -hmm. He knows you. She knows your dad. You provide and all that. But the love level, she doesn't know the love level. Little kids don't know the love. They don't know how much your parents love them. A lot of times, so they have their own kids. So finally in heaven, we'll be like, whoa, that's love. That's power. That's righteousness. Uh, but his name is called the Word of God. Yes, brother. And so, as usual, wouldn't this just solidify once again that? Jesus as God, it obviously, as you had me read, starts with talking about Jesus 12, 13, and we get down, like you said, in 16, if there was a father above him, and Jesus was not, you know, the one, Yeah. he's king of kings and lord of lords, Jesus yeah. was lord of lords, who would be over him? Yeah. He's at the top. He is God. Yeah. He's at the top. Yeah. And then Revelation 1 says he's the Alpha and Omega, and Revelation 21 or 22 talks about him, you know, the Alpha, the alpha and Omega. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if. You can't be Lord of Lords if there's a Lord above you. You know? Amen. All right, well, we're done. We're going to pray now.